Hello friends, today in this lecture I am going to discuss about effect of expansionary, contractionary fiscal policy on equilibrium level of income and effect of expansionary, contractionary monetary policy on equilibrium level of income and interest rate. Right? Here fiscal policy stands for government expenditure and taxation but our discussion primarily would confine with respect to government expenditure. So here when I am talking about fiscal policy, I am talking in terms of changing government expenditure. Right? If government follows increase in government expenditure policy, that stands for expansionary fiscal policy. If government reduces government expenditure, then it stands for contractionary fiscal policy. Similarly here, monetary policy stands for increase or decrease in money supply, right? Uh, here, increase of money supply is expansionary monetary policy and decrease of money supply is contractionary monetary policy, right? So, uh, unless we discuss effect of expansionary or contractionary fiscal policy, effect of expansionary or contractionary monetary policy on equilibrium level of income and interest rate, our purpose of doing ISLM model remains incomplete. Right? We try to understand the behavior of economy with respect to change in uh, fiscal policy and monetary policy right? Uh, with the help of ISLM model and that is what the whole purpose of ISLM model is primarily to understand that how uh, economic policies influence economy right? and when we talk in terms of uh, influence on economy primarily we are discussing in terms of uh, level of GDP right? in terms of interest rate. Right. So let us discuss here how uh, fiscal policy, how monetary policy affect the equilibrium level of income. Right. Now, as per ISLA model, graphically, we have derived this equilibrium level of income Y0 and equilibrium level of interest rate I0, right? uh, given this IS line and LM line. Remember, this LM line has been derived with respect to one level of money supply and this IS line has been derived with respect to one level of government expenditure right now suppose uh, government expenditure rises in the economy right now when government expenditure rises in the economy then what will happen is curve will shift rightward we have already understood we have already studied discussed that what are the factors which affect the location of is curve right so it is the autonomous components of aggregate demand which influence the locations of IS curve without affecting the slope and government expenditure is one uh, component of that autonomous components of aggregate demand, right? So if government expenditure rises, then what will happen? IS curve will shift rightward. IS curve will shift rightward, right? Now, as far as shift of IS curve is concerned, right, what will be the magnitude of rightward shift of IS curve due to rising government expenditure, it will be alpha G into delta G, right? So, so rightward shift of IS curve would be equal to alpha G into delta G, right? Now, if delta G is higher given alpha G, horizontal shift of IS curve would be more if alpha g is uh, if delta g is lower given alpha g then horizontal shift of is curve would be less right so suppose this is the magnitude of rise of government expenditure what happens is curve shifts rightward right you get this parallel is curve which is is prime right now what happens if government expenditure has increased, right, uh, which is being reflected by rightward shift of IS curve. So if government follows expansionary fiscal policy, IS curve shifts rightward, what happens to the equilibrium level of output in the economy, right? It is 
it rises and how how much it rises we can find out by find, uh, locating the intersection of new ys curve and the old lm curve and it is here right e1 so what do you get at e1 you get that equilibrium income has gone up on account of rising government expenditure so you could see the power of government expenditure in raising the level of gdp in the economy if you assume that all other factors remains the constant right rise in gdp would also lead to rise in employment right so this is where the role of government expenditure policy comes in influencing economic activities in the economy right uh, but then what happens simultaneously in the money market that rate of interest also rises right when government expenditure rises income rises but simultaneously what do you find that interest <coughs> interest rate rises sorry why does interest rate rises or uh, why does interest rate rise the interest rate rises primarily because if interest rate does not rise if it remains at i not in the economy right the rise in income would be something like e not let us call this a right however we are assuming that goods market money market are linked to each other right linked to each other so in that situation what happens when gdp rises income rises in the economy due to rise in government expenditure right money demand rises in the money market because money market is dependent upon goods market right now when uh, income rises money demand rises when money demand rises given money supply rate of interest rises and when rate of interest rises what happens private investment falls right and when private investment falls then what happens gdp falls and that is why your rise in gdp or rise in income due to rise in government expenditure is not equivalent to e not a rather it rises only y not y1 right because some portion of rise in income due to rise in government expenditure is offset by rising interest rate due to which there is fall in investment right so the rise of income due to rise in government expenditure some part of rise in income is offset by fall in investment private investment right so what do you observe here that now after expansionary fiscal policy we have rise in income equilibrium income from y0 to y1 but then it is being accompanied by fall in private investment right so government expenditure in the in the economy rises private investment falls and therefore what happens overall that share of private sector falls and share of government expenditure rises this is the reason why private sector is often opposed to is often opposed to rising government expenditure right rising fiscal deficit anyway so this is what your impact of expansionary fiscal policy similarly if government expenditure falls this is curve will shift leftward and you will have lower level of output right so this is what the implications of fiscal policy with respect to determinations of level of output in the economy right given money supply if government expenditure rises equilibrium income rises if government expenditure falls equilibrium income falls this is what your effect of expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy on equilibrium income and interest rate right so this is your fiscal policy effect on equilibrium uh, condition in the economy right the equilibrium condition is being reflected by a combinations of income and interest rate similarly we can also uh, observe effect of expansionary and contractionary monetary policy right now uh, what do you call uh, uh, suppose government expenditure does not rise right and therefore is curve remains the same fine but uh, we are assuming that money supply rises in the economy 
So what will happen? This LM curve will shift rightward, right? So suppose uh, you have got LM curve shifting rightward and it shifts to the extent of, uh, okay, it shifts to the extent of uh, this much E not A, right? E not A, okay? So rather than shifting IS curve, we are now shifting LM curve, right? To the right side. We know that LM curve lo location is affected by uh, change in uh, money supply, real money supply, right? So in case if there is rise in money supply, LM curve shifts rightward. If there is fall in money supply, LM curve shifts leftward, right? So you can you could visualize here that how does the central bank's monetary policy have got implications for output determinations in the economy, employment determinations in the economy, right? So suppose if uh, uh, in India, RBI increases money supply. Recently, you might have seen that during the crisis of Corona, right, uh, the central bank uh, governor, RBI's governor, right, has uh, adopted various measures to increase the money supply to the extent of 3. Uh, Seven uh, lakh crore rupees. Okay, so suppose if money supply rises, so what will happen? LM curve will shift rightward, right? And now suppose uh, the extent of rise of money supply is uh, uh, what you call delta M by P, right? Okay, that is the rise of money supply. So therefore, horizontal shift of uh, LM curve would be delta M by P upon uh, K, right? This we have discussed in case of uh, factors affecting the location of LM curve, right? So LM curve shifts rightward, okay? Now if LM curve shifts rightward, okay, what happens? You get now this LM prime. Now where is the equilibrium now? Equilibrium is no more at E0. Equilibrium is now at uh, what you call, uh, let us call this uh, uh, E2, right? Equilibrium as, as is at E2, right? And E2 gives us what? E2 gives us something like uh, Y2 level of equilibrium income, okay? So what you observe here? that when money supply rises, LM curve shifts rightward and the equilibrium moves from E0 to E2, E0 to E2, right? And we end up with Y2 level of income and what do you call it? I2 level of interest rate. So here we are able to find out in the ISLA model that it is not only fiscal policy which can influence the level of output but also monetary policy. If expansionary monetary policy is followed, it leads to higher level of GDP. And if similarly contractionary monetary is followed, LM curve will shift leftward and this would lead to what? Interaction of new LM curve at higher point of ice curve leading to lower level of income and higher level of interest rate. Right? So this is what your effect of expansionary monetary policy and contractionary monetary policy on equilibrium level of income and interest rate, right? Now, in case of uh, effect of monetary policy on equilibrium level of income, we need to talk about the transmission mechanism of monetary policy. That how come expansionary monetary policy or contractionary monetary policy leads to rise or fall respectively in equilibrium level of income, right? Now, what happens if money supply rises if money supply rises, what will happen in the money market? As you know, recall the uh, money market uh, diagram where we have money supply line vertical and downward sloping money demand line, right? In that situation, money supply rises, rate of interest falls, right? Because the intersection of money demand and money supply line happens at lower level of interest rate, okay? Now, when money supply rises, right rate of interest falls from i0 to i2 when rate of interest falls what happens given investment being function of rate of interest investment rises 
and when investment rises through multiplier output rises and you settle down at y2 level of income this is called transmission mechanism of monetary policy right how does rise in money supply leads to fall in interest rate obviously the central bank increases or decreases money supply through open market operation what is open market operation of the central bank it is associated with sale and purchase of government bonds right so in case if the central bank wants to increase money supply in the economy what will it do it will buy the government bonds from the market and when it buys government bonds uh, uh, in the market then there is more rise in the demand for bond government bonds because rbi the central bank of any concerned country rbi in case of india right is the bulk buyer so when a uh, central bank of any country buys government bonds then the demand for bonds goes up in the bonds market and when demand for bonds goes up then what happens the price of bonds goes up given the inverse relationship between rate of interest and bond price you expect the rate of interest to fall right and when the rate of interest falls obviously a uh, 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 business sector in the goods market right has now a uh, lower cost of borrowing and therefore they borrow more from the banks and they take up investment when they take up investment right output uh, rises production rises output rises right so this is what your uh, effect of expansionary and uh, uh, expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy uh, we had to discuss that how do they affect the equilibrium level of income and interest rate right so just to summarize uh, that when you we follow expansionary fiscal policy equilibrium level of output rises right and uh, uh, when we follow contractionary fiscal policy equilibrium level of output falls right however here rise in output due to expansionary fiscal policy is accompanied by rise in rate of interest and fall in output due to contractionary fiscal policy leads to fall in rate of interest okay similarly here uh, rise in money supply which is for expansionary monetary policy right when uh, expansionary monetary policy is followed that leads to rise in uh, output due to fall in interest rate right and when you follow contractionary monetary policy that leads to rise in interest rate and fall in output right so however uh, as far as the extent of rise or fall of output is concerned due to expansionary monetary policy or expansionary fiscal policy right more accurately you can find out from what you call uh, this uh, uh, formula right okay so if you want to find out that how much your equilibrium income would rise right due to rise in government expenditure right so you have to multiply government expenditure with fiscal policy multiplier fiscal policy multiplier right similarly when you want to find out how much income will rise due to rise in real money supply right so you have to multiply rise in money supply by mpn rise in money supply uh, by mpn right so mpn is nothing but monetary monetary policy multiplier fpm is what fiscal policy multiplier so these formulas are used to find out accurately in terms of number that how much your income would rise if uh, either government expenditure uh, rises or money supply rises right this is what uh, we had to discuss with respect to uh, effect of fiscal policy and monetary policy on equilibrium level of income and interest rate i hope it is clear to you thanks a lot for watching this